Hello, my name is Anthony Pollard and Finalysis, and today we will see how different teams take on Deco this early in the season and how active intakes play a huge role in this. Autonomous can make a huge difference and these teams can be adaptable and change on the fly and yet stay in a rhythm. And we will dive into it all right here on Finalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, planetary gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com slash robots to learn more and apply for discounts. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. To start with the context of the event, this is the Rookie Rumble event, which happened on October 18th, six weeks after kickoff. In the state of Washington, which is a very competitive division overall, we see a lot of good teams come from there, and they end up making a pretty solid impact whenever it comes to later in the season at events such as Worlds and Premier events. So the match we're taking a look at is match 12. On the Red Alliance, we have team 23849 Droid Force, which is a very solid robot that did really well this season and this past season, which ended up going to the Chicago Robotics Invitational. We have team 26336 Incredibots, and then looking at the blue alliance, we have team 20403 Techno Notes 2 and 30452 Robox. So in this match, we're going to be analyzing the red alliance. To start this match, we only see movement from the red alliance. We see Droid Force going and hitting the three artifacts. And we see Incredibots trying to make that one to help support Droid Force, but it barely misses off the front. Uh, this is giving Red Alliance a huge advantage. We see that there's already three, and Droid Force is grabbing three more. So, for this early in the season, this auto is huge. We see they missed one due to their as their intake and their shooter spinning up. It keeps getting power, and it ends up actually overshooting. Uh, they are going to grab three more. Insane this early. Unfortunately, they missed one on the grab uh, this early in this season. This is a huge, huge auto, and this is going to make a huge difference when it comes to points. When Even if you stop, you're like, this is insane. We have 10 more seconds left. So we see here that uh, Incredibots went to go and get out of the leave zone to get those extra few points. And unfortunately, they both hit each other, causing a huge collision. So luckily, though, Droid Force is a really strong autonomous program. And they're able to adapt and grab three more and go and score those. And they're going to go and fill that tunnel and get some motif points. So yeah, that tunnel is filled and they get the motif points in the back. Making adaptable autonomouses and ones that don't clash this year will be very difficult. As throughout the season, you have to worry about hitting the other robot. And once they fill the tunnels before the end of autonomous, which I have a feeling that definitely will happen, resetting it and going for more will be extremely important. We see that the red alliance is filled and unfortunately the blue alliance has none because they did not move. So to start the match, red alliance has 41 points. They have ended up with, at the end, 45 autonomous points with 9 classified artifacts worth 3 points each. So 27 artifact points total. 12 pattern points for matching the motif of purple, green, purple. As well as the 6 leaf points for the both robots. So we see droid force immediately clears the ramp which is going to be big while Incredibots goes over and steals from the blue side of the field. This strategy early season will be key because not everybody has an autonomous and if you have an intake this will put you that much farther ahead because the non-active intake where they have to be loaded in from the human player robots will end up not being able to get those. So that'll be a pretty big strategy that I'll hope teams to see throughout as it goes on. So something to note right here that we see in this freeze frame. The, we see after Droid Force cleared the ramp, the gate left two artifacts still in the ramp. This is important, and teams will have to keep this in mind when clearing. I hope as the season goes on that teams make mechanisms to control how many artifacts can go through so they can make those motifs. 
but this may end up playing a disadvantage because they're not able to get as many in there before going and having to clear it again. Droid Force, as we can see, then grabs from the blue human player station. And this is a quite a interesting strategy and a risky one as well. As long as the blue alliance is not grabbing from the from the station, it is fair game. So they're going to see if they're not in there, they're going to go for the shorter route, the better. So both Red Alliance bots cycle quickly, and we can see that they're just scoring up there. They're getting them all in. Droid Force going over to the Blue Alliance and grabbing the other artifacts uh, because the only robot they're really working against is 20403. Unfortunately, 30452 will not move the entire match. So we can see kind of whenever they're playing that neither of the Red Alliance robots have sensing because they have to align each time. But we see that at a minute and 37 seconds, the ramp is already almost full. And Droid Force grabs more from the Blue Alliance lines and they go across the ground. So he's grabbing from over there and the Red Alliance station. So is just going around the field with insane speed and accuracy. So we see that they clear the ramp for the second time already. So we can see that on the Red Alliance, that Droid Force ended up clearing the ramp and both Incredibots and Droid Force ended up scoring immediately after. Droid Force we see are zooming around the field as they're doing always grabbing from the blue human player station because there's again no blue robot over there so the shorter distance they have to go the better. And so we see that they end up overshooting and I'm assuming that that's going to be something that they are going to end up being able to fix as the season goes on. So we see that they are going to go to the blue line station as they have been this entire match to go and grab because it's the shortest distance but they see technoblades 2 is also going in and so to avoid getting the penalties droid force swaps strategies and moves to the other side of the field by their human player to grab the artifacts this swap of strategies is really amazing and i commend their drive team for being able to make this decision on the fly we see incredibots is playing it really risky and grabbing from right next to the human player station and luckily they do not hit them and they do not get penalized so this strategy is that we as we can see you know teams are playing differently and they're getting different strategies so we see that the red alliance now clears the ramp for a third time this match with a minute left they're taking roughly 30 seconds to fill the ramp which is amazing so this is just showing that even this early in the season if you're efficient, you can you can do that. So we see that they go and grab from the blue human player station like they have been. And we see that there's one singular artifact left in the ramp. So the ramp is just it's not really predictable. It's kind of it's kind of weird because each time they've cleared it, there's been a different number of artifacts. So teams will have to really take this into account. And we can see that as Droid Force comes in as an intaking, the balls go all over the field. So this is really good for the Red Alliance because now the balls are all over and they don't have to worry about going into the Blue Human Player Station to get the uh, all the artifacts. So we can see, yeah, they're filling up. One of the things and one of the mechanisms that I want to talk about is how small and nimble Droid Force's drivetrain is because they're just able to move around the field with ease and they do not have to really worry about the other robots because they're just going to go around them. So that's pretty unique in terms of that. And then we see that Incredibots has a selector on their, for their shooter and their intake so that they can choose which ones to shoot in which order. So I like to call this 3.5 on how many times they've cleared it, even though it's the fourth time. I say 3.5 because it's only really half full. And we can see, unfortunately, on the blue line side, that little robot's really struggling to shoot him up. So we see that, again, there was five artifacts on the Red Alliance, and there's two left. Luckily, those are the first two to make the motifs. So that will set them up really well. Had the Red Alliance not have cleared it, they would have had one motif already and had a, sec up, had a setup for a second one. So could be good, could be bad, just depends on how they end up playing the rest of this match, because... You know, you had one already and trying to go for 
doing it again could be the little bit difficult. So we see Droid Force and they're they're trying to go up for it. We're trying to see Incredibots into pitting in green, which really doesn't help them because you know they needed a they needed a purple, but it's okay because Droid Force ends up scoring a motif as we can see there. Uh, ends up getting that. So Droid Force ends up putting up another one just to make one more because that's all that they have space for. And so unfortunately, uh, their those shots are just short. So Droid Force just shoots in whatever they can. And so at this point, we see that the Red Alliance is just shooting them in right. That ramp is full. So we see there's one that overshot and that's just going on top and there's another one. So two that overflowed on top. And so going into the end of the match, we have two partial parks for the Red Alliance and one full park for the Blue Alliance. So what an absolutely insane match. So the rest, the resting score is 125 to zero, which is incredible this early in the season. The final score ended up being 149 to 10, which is absolutely crazy. We're six weeks in and we already have this many points. Whenever we go to look at the breakdown, it just, we see that much better how they ended up, yeah, 26 classified artifacts for the Red Alliance and two overflows. That's 28 artifacts total. That's amazing. And there, no penalties either. So we see that even though this early in the season, we can see um, that it doesn't really matter how early it is. If you can come up with something that's good and come up with something that works, it'll be good. Because the adaptability, we see the adaptability of all these robots and the tuning that these have done for the autonomous and the staying in rhythm with the other robots are going to really make an impact. This game will continue to develop and the strategies will become even more important to the game. This match is one to look at with some really solid teams that allowed us to see what autonomous at state competitions may look like in different ways that bots can grab and how that plays into the game. We see how an active intake allows for even more change up in strategies and being more complex and adaptable. I hope to see many more matches like this in the future. Until then, like and follow and subscribe to the Fun Robotics Network to stay up to date on all fun robotics events going on and let us know in the comments what you think the game will become. I'm Anthony, signing off. Keep calm and robot on. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, plantier gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com robots to learn more and apply for discounts.